Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here today I have a playthrough for Land and Freedom, the Spanish Revolution and Civil War. This one is an historical game for one of three players. You are playing one of three historical factions in 1930 Spain, resisting the rise of the Spanish fascist government. In this primarily card-driven game, there are cooperative elements as well as competitive elements. Cooperatively, all three factions have to work together in order to secure Spain against the invading fascist forces. But in addition, each faction has their own individual goal. The communists and the moderates are vying for control of the government, while the anarchists are trying to secure their own understanding of land and freedom. So along with that card play, you have some area majority, you have some tug of war aspects along the five tracks. This one is highly unique and interesting, and I'm excited to bring you the solo playthrough of the anarchist versus the bot controlled moderates and communists. But before I get to all that, let's talk about the One Stop Co-op Shop. You're on the YouTube channel. We also have our YouTube stream channel. Please, it really helps us if you could make sure you're subscribed to both and like the videos that you enjoy. We also have our podcast, which is weekly. Check your favorite podcast feed for the One Stop Co-op Shop podcast. We have our Discord, which is a great community, active 24 hours, talking about games new and old, rare and popular, fantastical and historical, the whole range of solo and co-op. If that excites you, please check the show notes for the link. The Discord is free to join. Please consider a contribution to our Patreon. Our Patreon allows us to keep games on the table and the tech upgraded. In exchange, you get exclusive access to videos on YouTube as well as channels in the Discord. However you choose to engage with us, we would love to have you. This is the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. So before I get into the playthrough, let me go ahead and give the previous overviews of the component tree, and then I'll get into the rest of the nitty gritty rules as I finish the first round. So here is Spain. And here are the four regions that the fascists are going to attack. You have the southern region, you have Madrid, you have Aragon, and then you have the northern region. Every round, and there are 12 rounds uh, to the game, split up amongst three eras, so four rounds per era, we are going to get attacked by the fascists. So then you have the year one attacks, and then you'll get the year two attacks, which are worse, and then year three is uh, pretty devastating. The beginning of every round, the enemy is going to play a single card. And you see this particular card is pretty mean towards the end, the northern area, and then it'll do other effects as well. But this is the thing to worry about for this particular round, because if the enemy were to get to 10 in any uh, two areas, then that is a loss for every single player. In addition, if they were to get Madrid to 10, that is also a loss for all the players. So there are ways for the players to respond, and I'll get into that a little bit. Yes, the players can uh, get their own attacks, so these are double-sided. So eventually, I'm going to be able to get certain regions up to 10 victory points. However, uh, that is not a overall victory condition. It's just nice to have. In addition, one of the things I have to do, make sure it happens by the time I end year three, is at least three of these zones need to be plus one in strength in order to even think about winning. That is the cooperative side. All three players are gonna work on this area together. Here are those tracks that I showed in the overview. They coordinate with the different factions. So these two uh, belong to the anarchists. Uh, the government is uh, up for grabs as the Soviets on this track and the moderates on this track vie for attention. Really what's happening as the tug of war occurs from round to round is that this is going to get tossed back and forth, the initiative tracker. This is really, really important. Whoever ends any turn with the initiative tracker is going to be able to place one of their scoring markers into this snazzy scoring bag. I'll explain how exactly that works as we get into the playthrough. Just know for now, uh, this initiative token is the prize. Try to get this as much as possible. Each round after the enemy plays their card, all three pairs have a chance to go, starting with the initiative player. In the multiplayer or in the solo, if you are playing the active player, when you go, you will have a hand of cards. At the beginning, you'll draw five and then uh, it'll dwindle as the game goes on. You'll have a chance to draw a little bit of hand manipulation there. The key are these action point numbers. So then most of the cards are going to have one action point. Some are going to have two. And then you have this a really nice one, the leader, one per faction. That gives you three. One of the things that you could do on your turn is play a card into your tableau that activates your action points 
action points are how you fight back in the game. So then let's say I wanted to fight back on the northern frontier. I would declare that I am attacking. You only put, need to put one of these uh, anytime you attack a zone. And if I played a two AP, then I would use my two AP to launch my two attacks. In this particular case, that would negate these two. And I've progressed this towards that neutral state. And that would mark my contribution to the fight. And that's if I felt like playing Mr. Nice Guy. That's not always going to happen. Sometimes I want to focus on my own personal goal. So I can also use my AP, in this particular case too, to advance one track. Usually I'm going to want to advance uh, stuff on my own tracks. As the anarchist, that's liberty and collectivization. So then I would move to, I would proc whatever icon I land on. That's once per game. I can cover that up. And then I'll be that much closer to my goals, which is getting initiative. For the anarchist player, you see these two symbols which match with my faction icon. If I can get both of my tokens at or above those tokens, then I get initiative. That represents the collectivization of land, the people taking the land back, governing it by themselves, uh, as opposed to the outside forces like capitalists or the government or anybody else. Now, the two government factions, they're not going to like that. <laughs> so uh, they're going to try to lower my track. And when the, my track is below where it needs to be, then they will jostle uh, for this initiative tracker. That would be this track, and it's going to go back and forth. These are support tracks. I'll show you how that works as the game goes on. But just know this is the key one. As this goes back and forth, they will toss the initiative back and forth unless the anarchists are able to do their thing. The last thing I can do with my AP when I play a card into my tableau is play with these bonuses. So they start on, uh, eventually there will be effects that will turn them off. So for one AP, I could turn one on. If they both happen to be off, then I could spend two AP to turn them back on. This one is the teamwork bonus. They will provide a little bit of extra oomph as multiple players uh, play uh, tokens into frontiers. And then this one is the morale bonus. The morale bonus gives an extra action uh, that is keyed off of these icons over here. So let's say the morale was on and I played for the action points. I can also take one of these actions. Uh, it would be uh, unleashing uh, more attacks. Uh, it would be advancing tracks or uh, regressing other tracks. And there's different effects that you can do. So then that would be an extra action if the morale bonus is on. In future turns, as I build on my tableau, I'll be able to do one action, which would trigger multiple things. So then let's say uh, this was the state of my tableau after turn three, I would be able to you know, use my three actions and then one bonus morale action to unleash two fighters or to progress myself three on the Liberty track, depending on what I wanted to do. So that's a big part of the strategy is coordinating this so that you can maximize uh, what you can do with your own bonus morale action. The other thing that I can do besides playing a card into my tableau is I could play it for the event. Once I play it for the event, it is gone for the game for the most part. So then you could see there are a whole bunch of bullet points. It's usually the type of thing you want to do when you're really behind on something. When two players have ganged up on you, you need something to uh, get yourself back in the game. For the most part, you want to try to uh, build up that tableau. But every once in a while, this event could really swing things your way. One last little bit that incentivizes the collective defense is the bottom half of the fascist card. So then usually one of the places that are assaulted turns into a task. Anybody who participates in defense of uh, kind of recovering what was attacked is can get a goodie. Very oftentimes, the goodie involves getting these hero tokens. And there's lots of other ways to get hero tokens as well. They allow you a little bit of currency to do extra stuff like draw a card. And you play really well and you're able to move your tracker all the way to the end. You'll be able to unlock a medallion. Medallions, uh, the more powerful ones will use hero tokens as well. So that's another thing you can use them on. Uh, there are also some one-time effects over here. So this is another little bonus to think of as you're looking at everything there is to do. After the enemy gets their four plays and all uh, players have taken their turns, uh, to reset, then you would choose one of your cards to leave in your tableau, discard the rest. You can keep one of your cards into your hand, and now your tableau grow a little bit bigger for year two, a little bit bigger for year three. The other thing that happens at the end of each year is that we check for glory. So uh, the bag will start with three tokens, and as I said, anybody who ends around with initiative token will be able to put another token in there. At the end of that year, I'm going to pull out a token and then that is going to score. And then the other two factions are going to get hero tokens. That represents their collective sacrifice. 
Two are going to be pulled out in year two and one in year three. So that incentivizes you to try to end as many turns as possible, no matter how difficult it is, with this initiative token so that you can throw as many of your tokens in the bag as possible. There will be more tokens uh, than times that you pull them out. So you just want to increase your odds along the way. Year three has something called the final bid, and there are also five more pulls from the bag, but we'll get into that. Hopefully we survive that long so I could demonstrate what happens at the end of year three. I'm playing a solo game, so my opponents are the bots. So then each character has a sheet. This is the player sheet, and then you would just turn it over, and then it would have what looks like a complicated flow chart, uh, but it's actually uh, pretty simple. All that's gonna happen on the bot's turn is that they're gonna pull a card and play. So then they are gonna play the event, uh, and they always play the event. They never play for the action points. So then you do the events, and if there's any conflicts, then these uh, rules explain all the different conflicts in a pretty simple way. So then they would help out a plus one attack uh, to the frontier that is being attacked. They would use any medallions, they'd spend any hero tokens to progress uh, tracks mostly, and then you pass turn. Pretty simple to run. Both of these will be automated, and they will provide my companionship and competition at once. So there's a lot of little rules that I did not cover in that overview. Uh, this first round, I'll take a little bit of time, explain as many rules as I can, and then we'll get going for show. All right, so first of all, we pull our card, Spanish Legion. They are attacking the Southern Front, which coordinates with the Soviet faction. Generally, uh, Aragorn cards are going to hurt me or benefit me. Same thing with the Northern and the Moderates. All right, so what terrible thing happens to the Russians? So then four tokens are going to land on Southern. One token is going to land on Aragorn. And two progress is going to be taken away from the Soviet support. Ugh. So we have one attack on Aragorn, four attacks on Southern, and then an extra attack because this track went back too which launches another attack into the southern region. That won't happen again, but that is bad news for the Soviet player. Could be bad news for me too, because if it lands here in this very end piece, then it would turn off the morale tracker, and that could happen multiple times per game. Gonna wanna avoid that at least. And the benefit to any player who contributes to the southern defense, every player will get two uh, hero tokens for helping, but then the Soviets will be able to draw an extra card, which for solo is draw an extra token, which is three total. Uh, I gotta figure out if I wanna contribute to that. All right, so let's see what the moderates do in response. The moderates are the one that have the initiative token. They start every game with that. All right, Mexican guns. See, this is why I like the history of this game. I didn't know that Mexicans went and helped out in the uh, Spanish Civil War, but that does make sense. Front closest to defeat, plus three. Oh, that's really good for us. If four and eight is eight or better, which it won't be, government plus two. If not plus one, that's the, that's the effect. And then draw a card. The bot never draws cards. They only get hero tokens. So they are going to increase their uh, support of the government. This means, uh, this symbol, is that when you land here, they're going to increase their foreign aid by one. And that's going to be a one-time effect. They increase the government any further, though. They couldn't do it. They would need foreign aid to be here. And then they could unlock this and go for that medallion, but that is not the case right now. Oh, that's right there. And so providing for the common defense, uh, the one that is close to defeat, which is definitely Southern, is going to take the minus three. Uh, that second part of the turn, they are also going to contribute to the defense, so they're going to take another minus one. The Southern faction is looking a lot better now. Well done, moderates. The bot has no medallions yet. That's their phase three, phase four. They look to see if they can use their hero tokens. They don't start with any. The other two players start with two. Uh, the, the initiative holder starts with zero. They got the one from the card effect. They can't do anything uh, because it takes two to move up these tracks. That's what these symbols are. It takes four to move up the government. So when they have four, they're obviously going to move up the government. That's their, uh, puts them for their win condition. And then I'm stuck with having three for these tracks. So since the bot only has one, they don't look at the tracks, they're done for their turn. The initiative tracker will tell you which way it goes. First and third rounds, it goes clockwise. And then the second round, it goes counterclockwise, which means it comes to me. So I start my round with five cards. And I got my fours, uh, my four ones, which is more of those in the deck than anything. But this is perfect for what I got going on. I'm going to use that two AP. If I get a two on as a beginning card, I pretty much do this every single time for the first round. I'm going to move my collectivization token back to uh, that allows me to deploy a single 
uh, attack. That one helmet off the track allows me to participate in this southern attack. So a couple things happen. First of all, I do get the one attack, but there's also a teamwork bonus. Any time the second or third player jumps in, it has to be the second or third player, can't team with yourself, you get a bonus. So then I get to remove another one. Didn't have to use the AP on the region defense, could get it off the track, beautiful. And also in addition, the morale bonus is on, so I get another action of one of these four icons. So then I'm going to do the collectivization action. So then uh, I get to move up one more on the track, which this symbol means that I can move my Liberty up, which I am now, uh, I have both icons past the six, which means that I claim this valuable initiative token. And hopefully I keep it. Uh, the communist is a mess with me and I can put my token in the bag at the end of the round. I have hero tokens. I only have two, so I can't progress even more up the track. So it's time to pass turn. Now the bot has a super nasty habit of, you know, hammering me with minus three, minus four on your track. Uh, so I'm not gonna savor that for long. Let's see what happens. All right, add two fascist attacks. Oh, that's not good. Uh, to any front, uh, Soviet support plus three, government minus two. So uh, that looks a little bit like Egon Spengler. Uh, well, I don't know but what's going on there. So this is one of those things where one faction is going, go over there, attack them. Uh, they're going to go in uh, play order. So they don't never attack Madrid, uh, but they are going to attack Northern, which is going to hinder the effects, the good effects that are going to the moderates. So some big swings in influence. The Soviets are going to get uh, plus three. The government is going to move two, minus two towards them. So theoretically, they have the government. Uh, they would be able to claim that initiative token because of their influence. But no, the people are holding on to the land. The government's going to have to do more than that. The Soviets are going to help out in Southern with their second phase. Uh, and they get the teamwork bonus, so that's actually two. And that's going to flip that minus one to a plus one. So here is where the Soviets are dirty scoundrels. Uh, they are going to move. Uh, well, they're going to spend their two hero tokens to move. Uh, that is uh, because they have them. Uh, and they're going to move their Soviet support, which only costs two, to here. That is going to lower Liberty. And because Liberty is being denied, the government has come in, passed some laws, deployed some extra police. They have taken initiative away from me, and now they are in control of Spain. That is a dirty trick, sir. All right, so we resolve this. The Southern Front is clearly better than minus one. Uh, they're at plus one. So then the Soviets are going to get a card, which, as I said before, when they draw cards, they draw hero tokens instead. And each faction is going to get two more hero tokens. The moderates now have three. I have four, which is really nice. What's not nice is that the Soviets get to put their token in the bag because they're dirty cheating. Everything else stays the same. The faction tokens go back to where they came from, and we are ready for another round. That is a full round of land and freedom. All right, up to round two, we have the General San Jurjo. Uh, I think it's San Jurjo or something like that. Uh, okay, so we got the north is going to be attacked by three. The V, which means the area close to victory, is also going to get attacked by three. And more attacks on my liberty. No! The game is called Land and Freedom. So as you see, the north is under very, very heavy fire. If we're able to help that, get that to minus one, then that would help the moderates. All right, the communist goes. Unfortunately, because they go first, I go last. Pfft. Let's see what happens. Abraham Lincoln Brigade. So according to the history, uh, it's written on the card. Uh, this is one of the first uh, integrated military units in U.S. history. I don't know about that. I'm going to look that up to verify that. Anyway. Any front, plus one, you know where that's going. Soviet support, plus one, four and eight, or plus two, four and eight, minus three. Again, it's avoiding me. That's not going to happen the whole game. So any front is the area that is most likely to be defeated. So they are going to attack there once off the card and once off their bonus action. Soviet support, plus two. So they're going to get another attack over there. And foreign aid minus three. The north is going to come in. Man, I am getting rid of a lot of these one-time effects nice and early. Soviets going to attack the north. They just triggered something that would put attack on the north. So it stays at five. Soviets have three hero tokens. They're going to use two to progress uh, over here. Uh, now, if they want to, or if they can, they could move the government even closer that way and claim a medal. So that's going to take them a little while, but at least they um, open that up and they are two spaces away from their own metal. Let's see what the moderates do in response. 
Uh, they are going to turn on a bonus, which I believe is gets them a token. Uh, doesn't act. Oh, there it is. Turn on a bonus. A teammate bonus is the first choice. Uh, doesn't say anything about getting a token. Uh, we'll just give them a token <laughs> uh, because everything is give a token. Why not? Uh, but noting that that is not officially written down, that's how I'm going to play it. Uh, remove one attack from up to three fronts. Interesting. Uh, government plus one and draw a card, which gets them another token. So remove one attack is not an attack. They're not going to just participate in all the wars. It's just kind of making them withdraw. They are going to participate in this attack and with the teamwork bonus. So that lets them participate in the northern defense. They have five tokens. They're going to go spend four. That is the government. And they are going to gain control and get that initiative token back. All right, time to play another card in my tableau. It's going to be F-I-J-L uh, for the action point and the bonus. I'm going to have one action point, and I'm going to use the helmets. One action point brings my liberty back to six, which gets my... Um, initiative token back. <laughs> the last couple games I played of this, it didn't nearly pass that much. Uh, this is a pretty exciting tug of war here. Going to participate in this fight uh, with two helmets and with a teamwork bonus, that's a third helmet, uh, which lets me place it into the positives. Now, I don't think I did this last time, but this is definitely a rule. Anytime someone starts to establish Republican control in any area, they get a free hero token. I now have five hero tokens, so close to six, so close to getting the medal. You know where I'm going. End of the round, the northern front is definitely uh, minus one or better. They're at plus one, actually. So then the benefit is four and eight goes up to. As far as uh, things that help my opponent, that is as good as I could have asked for. Everybody gets two hero tokens. The communists are at three, the moderates are at three, and I am at four. Delicious. And I get to put my token in the bag end of round two all right we are at round three the italians are coming aviazione legionaria oh boy italian is lacking uh so we have three in aragorn one in the north and two where their victory condition is closest which happens to be the north it's the only one in the positives so basically three in the north so we got one two up in the north and then another three for aragorn no my hometown I keep on saying Aragorn. It's Aragorn. <laughs> this is not Lord of the Rings. That's terrible. And if I'm able to uh, get success, then I will get another collectivization point. But I'm absolutely not waiting for that, uh, that point. Uh, I'm going to use that right now to get a medal and also fire off these helmets. Three of them, baby. Whoop. All right. So that is one, two, three helmets off. And I got my medal. So these are randomly chosen. There's a bunch of choices. Uh, you just pick five and leave the rest in the box. I am going to go for propaganda. So the descriptions of all the medallions are here. Propaganda means gain two extra hero points from each successful test. Oh, man, that is very, very good. Keeps me in hero tokens. I got plenty of use for you. About to use three right now to increase my liberty. Get closer to that second medal. Uh, and I get to move the government tracker one. That's basically uh, letting them dance. So then right now, I'm going to just declare that the Soviets are in control. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, moving them back and forth. Doesn't really affect me too much, but it's a thing. All right, the Soviets are mad that I'm monkeying with them. Let's see what they do to get back at me. All right, government minus two. If you control the government, liberty minus three. If not, minus two. Yep, they're hitting me in the liberties. So government minus two, they are at eight plus for their Soviet support. So they're able to cross that threshold. In addition, they cover this uh, image of Joseph Stalin, and then that progresses them one towards their own medal. And throughout that, they control the government. So it's liberty minus three. No, couldn't do much about that. The communists take the initiative marker. They contribute to the defense of Aragon because of my dangerous assaults over here. They're now at neutral. So they are going to spend two of the Dirty Hero tokens to get their medal. They're going to take the ones that are permanent upgrades. They don't take the temporary upgrades. This one is a discard. Uh, happens to be put the uh, token in the glory bag. They don't do that. Instead, they randomly take strategy. 
So uh, like mine, it is a permanent upgrade. Whenever they support a front, they're gonna uh, put down an extra lid of support without spending any hero tokens, pretty sweet. All right, so the moderate player happens to be lagging behind this game. Let's see if they can mount a little bit of a rally uh, here in this last little phase. Collectivization minus three, <laughs> government plus two, and draw two cards, which is two hero tokens. Government moved from three to five. I moved from 10 to seven. Nothing changed. Too bad, moderates. Declaring it, it offense on the Aragon. They are going to put their two uh, attacks there. And because they added to the Republican defense, they get an extra token, which gives them six tokens in total, which lets them take control of the government. My God! <laughs> And take the initiative token. Man, it's going back and forth. They happen to have two left. They're going to land on minus liberty. <laughs> Let's get out those out of the way right now. Actually, that's not minus liberty. That's minus collectivization. I'm still in okay range to take it back. I did get this. We all participated. It is at zero or better. We, are, we have improved collectivization. I get four tokens for participating in that thanks to my upgrade. Everyone else gets two. The moderates are able to put their token in the bag onto turn four. All right. So now we have volunteers from Fascist Italy, the last card of the turn. Uh, D is the area closest to defeat. Uh, the moderates are the, the player. Uh, they are not going to choose the northern because that benefits them. Uh, they're going to throw those misdirection attacks towards the southern area where the Soviets are camped out. Bringing them up to five. Madrid is also going to get two. Madrid is the task event. Uh, so if Madrid is at zero better, which should be no problem. You see it, it's usually no problem. Unless some other shenanigans are going on, uh, the government is going to get affected. Not that I really care about that. Sweet little uh, benefit is that the Soviets are going to go down two because of that card. Yay. So the moderates are going to go. Please don't mess with me. Uh, turn on a bonus. So the bonuses are off. Like I said, I'm just going to throw my uh, hero token just for that. And any front plus three. Wow. That is <laughs> as good as I could have hoped for. That's going to be the southern area, which is going to be minus four, minus three from the card, minus one from the support. They have three tokens, so they're going to boost their foreign aid so close to the bonus. So now it's going to be me, the anarchist. I don't care <laughs> about the South. Uh, you can ride in heck. <laughs> so I am just going to go gung-ho towards uh, my one action point, And then my bonus is Liberty. So four towards the Liberty track. So this is really unfortunate. I have to move my Civ piece here. I was going to do four, but I can't pass this line while, Civ while a collectivization is below eight. So that's what that says. It has to be greater than or equal to eight. So that's a shame. So I have to use my one action point to move collectivization here. And then my three points off of the morale bonus to move it here. Oh, I'm so close. I could have participated in the Southern, but you didn't let me. But that's what having lots of hero tokens gets you. That's why I took that benefit. That lets me cross this threshold and use that attack. Let's me go to Southern and bonus with the teammate. Uh, that switches to one. I get another token for getting the Republican. Oh, you need to coordinate your bonuses in order to do well in this game. All right, I have seen this bone me before. If it gets uh, Liberty or Collectivization minus three, then they are taking the uh, thing from me. Turn on a bonus. Let's go ahead and give them a, to a token for that. Uh, front closest defeat plus two. Okay, that is actually not Southern. It is Madrid. I'll take care of that. Draw three cards. All other players draw one. So then what they're going to do is that's three tokens. And then they're going to use these other three tokens. Actually, what they're going to do is they're going to use four of those six tokens to get the government control back. Then they're going to try to manipulate my track. But you need, they need three. They only have two. Neener, neener, neener. Ensuring the defense of the land. Uh, that is the assist. And they are going to get the marker for that. Uh, I am going to uh, take care of Madrid because of the card effect. Looking pretty good. So this is why it's a benefit for them uh, to take control of the government, even though they didn't take initiative, uh, is this uh, test. So then the test says they go ahead and move the government away from the center marker. That's what that means. Everyone else gets two hero markers. I get four. The communists are at four hero tokens. Uh, the moderates are at three. I am at seven tokens. Love it. 
and then we finish off the turn sequence and do the end of year. So initiative player adds to the bag of glory. Fantastic. Initiative player for end of year adds to the bag of glory. It says again, fabulous. Score initiative tokens from the bag of glory. In year one, it's only one that gets pulled. Let's see if I'm lucky. I am lucky. Yay. So that gives me that little bit of leg up towards victory. The other characters are going to get two hero tokens each. The hero token pool is now empty. I thought I read it in the rules. I'm not seeing it right now, but I'm going to say that the hero pool is limited. There are no extra tokens that can go out unless you start spending them again, which is exactly what's going to happen in the next year. All right, here we are at year two. Looks like we're going to feel it right away. The northern flank gets attacked for six. My God, uh, that puts it at eight. That's going to be uh, pretty hard to deal with. Madrid gets one. The northern front needs to be reduced to zero. So that is the onslaught that has been unleashed. In addition, we are going to turn off the teamwork bonus. So no more extra uh, attacks whenever there is helping. You know I'm turning that one on. And for icing on the cake, my civilization is a collectivization is going down one. So I kept one card in my hand, the industrial democracy, and I got my three card and the rest are all ones. <laughs> Uh, natural to play to three, get three action points. That's really exciting, but this actually plays into the final bid. Uh, you're going to bid the strength of the cards uh, in the final turn of the game. And so having higher cards in hand, which means, uh, you know, keeping the three, drawing a couple of other twos and relying on my ones, going to have to do the best that I can with that. So not only that, uh, I am going to be selfish. I know the Northern Front looks really bad right now. And it might not be possible to actually make that task if I don't concentrate all of my firepower to it. But that is the game. Are you going to be selfless or selfish? You know where I'm going. So I get one action point. That's going to go towards the front. But I'm going to use the two Liberty here. I'm helping. I swear I'm helping. Hey, I'm not help. Oh. Look at that dirty trick that the bot played. That's why I have hero tokens. Collectivize the farms. They are collectivized enough. Yes, sir. Ah, that's much better. <laughs> to Liberty. So I did get one thing that was selfish. Let me go ahead and get an uh, upgrade that is selfless. So this will let me spend hero tokens to buff my support. So I'll be throwing out more helmets along with everybody else. You see, I'm not so selfish. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and spend those two hero tokens, bringing me down to two. Not happy about that, but that's the way it goes. And turning on the teamwork bonus again. So in year two, the play goes counterclockwise, which means it's going to scoop up over to the moderates now with their five hero tokens. Play a card. They're going to do Madrid front plus three. That helps. Four and eight plus one. Don't care about that. You may swap a card in your tableau, one in your hand. You see some of the flexibility that the game offers in the multiplayer. What does it offer in the solo? Boom. Hero token. So this is really helpful because this is going to cover up this attack and help me defend that northern front even better. So the Madrid front is going to get three, which gets it another hero token. Getting it to the Republican side on the positive side, that's what did that. They get a teamwork bonus. So then we have one, two, three off of the card, one, two off of their free attack. And so uh, order has been somewhat restored in the northern area. So they are going to try to spend themselves back into the fray. We got four tokens right there, uh, which we are going to move the government tracker. Not quite control of that, but what are you going to do? And they have three tokens left. This does advance their cause. So they are going to move Liberty back. One, still not in charge. The moderates are definitely the runt of the litter in this game. Communists are going to go with their six hero tokens. So that's why I wasn't worried about, uh, you know, replacing those tokens because they use them. <laughs> the pool is nice and full now. All right. Any front, plus one. Liberty and collectivization. Oh, man, you must have been a anti-farmer. That is no good. And also gain a hero point. So go ahead, gain your dirty hero point. And this is why I do not feel bad at all for being selfish because they attack me selfishly. I still keep control with that minus two. All those resources uh, pumping up my track, worth it. 
All right, so a lot of little bonuses are adding up here. They're going to add strength to a front off the card, plus a teamwork bonus. That wipes these out. Now we have the front bonus that they get from every turn, and they have their strategy medallion, which is an always-on effect. When they add a strength, they're going to add more strength. So they get two back. Wow, that northern one turned away real good, and they get a hero point for their troubles. Don't worry, <laughs> the deck has a lot of surprises for me. I know I'm looking good right now, but the enemy will say the bigger they are, the harder they will fall. So the communists have six hero tokens to spend. Now they're going to spend all of them to knock me out of leadership, and they are going to acquire leadership for themselves. The points giveth and the points taketh away. All right, so uh, we're going to help the moderates now because we got the northern front to zero. Uh, they are going to get two for their troubles, and they're also going to draw a card, which is a token. The uh, communist player draws two, and because of my medallion, I draw four. I'm up to six. Although I lose it, I have the resources to get it back. You see the tug of war. All right, so let's speed through this a little bit faster. So uh, I had all Republican strength before this card hit, but Second Sino-Japanese War, uh, the place that was... Uh, victorious or closest to victory, which was the South, uh, got turned into fascist control, and Madrid also has some uh, things going on over there. And now we have to deal with the Madrid front. And those, this reflects the year two. I have to get it to four or better in order for everybody to draw a card. All right, so we have the Madrid Defense Council for the Communist player. Madrid front plus one, perfect. Uh, if you earn a hero point this turn, gain one extra. That's nice. Uh, Liberty minus two, boo! <laughs> and government minus one. They really don't want the peasantry to be in charge, and they really want to be in charge. And once again, you have to add up all the little bonuses. The card gives them plus one on the Madrid front, and then with their medallion, they get to add another one, so that brings them to the positive, and that gives them a hero token. Guess what? When they earn hero tokens this turn, they earn an extra one, so that is two. They're also going to add strength to the front, so they are already... Uh, ahead of the game when it comes to Madrid. And with their four hero tokens that they have, they're going to move their Soviet support over to two. Now they can open up that government track and try to get over to open that medal. All right, so I don't love my options over here. I don't have a, a lot of ways to get Liberty up, which is my main goal right now. So I'm making do. George Orwell, homage to Catalonia. Just heard the podcast with Alex Knight. Uh, talking with Elizabeth Davidson. So go ahead and check out the Beyond Solitaire podcast. Mentions this book as an inspiration to this game. Let's go ahead and play that for its one action point and one, two, three helmets. So check this out. We got one, two, three helmets off of the basic effect. We have one helmet from the teamwork bonus. Teamwork, baby. And we have one helmet. I paid one hero token to fire off this medallion which lets me add a helmet whenever I uh, engage in some strategy. Come on, camera. There we go. Volunteers. That's really close to 10, which would get a victory. Uh, that is not a, a game condition, but that would protect Madrid, remove a possible defeat condition. And if I'm the one that is able to put the last bit of support on there, then I would get three tokens. I'm betting that the uh, moderates won't put three helmets on there leaving that one open for me next turn. So using that hero token on the defense was a little bit costly. It cost me my personal goals. I only have five tokens, so I can only spend three of them. Oh, well, uh, let's go ahead and bump Liberty up one. Got to get that um, control and that metal somehow. All right, speaking of those moderates, are you going to help or are you going to hinder? Let's see. We got publicized fascist war crimes. Neat. Uh, move up the two attacks from a front to another front. No problem. If you control the government, which they do not, uh, for an A plus four. If not, plus three. It doesn't matter. They only have three spaces left in the track. They finally got their medal. And they're not going to get this medal, which is a one-time use. Hopefully, I'll get it. Instead, they get organization. So in solo, the organization medal has a, a particular use. So uh, it will allow them once per turn on the medallion phase, spend one hero point to move the priority track one step. The priority track is usually either government or Soviet support or not Soviet support, foreign aid for them. Uh, so that's a massive discount once per turn. 
And so there are only two uh, attacks on the board currently, uh, and they have to move to. So they are going to move them towards Aragon, which negates all of this and puts all of these territories at neutral. They place one helmet over here, and then they get the teamwork bonus, which is really nice because uh, hopefully next turn, nobody will attack Madrid. I'll be able to attack it myself and get all the benefit from liberating it with the 10 uh, support here. And then they get their medallion once per turn. They are going to move government towards them. They're not in charge yet, but they're working on it. They have two hero tokens left, which doesn't let them do anything on the board they're interested in right now. All right, end of turn stuff. That is going to be one more Soviet token in the bag. Was not able to take it from them. Hopefully next turn. Uh, we have the uh, task, which is completed. A Madrid front four or better? Absolutely. So everyone gets a uh, draw, which means that the bots are going to get three hero tokens each, putting the communists at three and the moderates at five. And I get one, two, three, four for this effect over here. And I get to draw a card, an actual card. Gorillas uh, gives me a little bit of liberty, some helmet. Ooh, this is nice. Uh, Liberty plus two, peek at the faction desk. Hmm, neat little card there. All right, third card of year two. Come on, no Madrid, no Madrid, no Madrid. The treason of Santonia. So that is three attacks on the area that is closest to defeat, which was tied. The communists are in charge. They're not going to attack themselves, so they're going to distract towards Aragon. And this one had two Republican strength, and now it has been turned around to three fascist strength. And they continue to ding me right in the Liberty. Ow, my Liberty. That hurts. All right. Communists are leading the fray. Stalin gets the Republic's gold. Ooh, look how happy he is. Remove a blank marker from the track. Interesting. They thought of everything on this character sheet. Uh, letter E, remove a blank token from the track. Instead, gain three hero points. So they'll go. We also got Soviet support at plus three. Uh, foreign aid, minus one, and draw a card. You know what that means. They are about to solidify some crazy control of the government this turn. But first, they add strength. They're going to remove two strength, one from the uh, actual action and one from their medallion. They have seven tokens. They are one away from being able to move this thing twice. Instead, they only move it once. All right, so let's try many things at once. That's why that card draw was really key. Let's go ahead and play those gorillas and do the Liberty action. So first, let's go ahead and move that collectivization track up one and our th a track of Liberty plus one. We have yanked control of the government. Give me back my land. Actually, incorrect sequencing. I did not use my action point on that. I used my three hero tokens because my action point is actually gonna go here. Let's go ahead and get Madrid going. They have 10 victory there. And so that means victory. Victory on a front is permanent. Any player who contributed to the victory gains three hero points. I'm going to give the moderates a chance to contribute here because they could. Uh, because if, they, if the card specifically says they contribute to Madrid. Otherwise, I get those points myself, which is what I wanted. I'm selfish. Any fascist card attacking the victorious front instead attaches the initiative player's choice of front. All right. I get to spread out the attacks to whoever I want. Any player card strengthening the victorious front can now be applied to the front of the player's choice. So there's a priority system for the bot. All sorts of good stuff happens with this victory. And to cap off that awesomeness, let me go ahead and secure my gains. Spend my last three hero tokens. Both of my markers are on seven. What a turn. What a turn. Let's see how the moderates are going to screw me up. They do not screw me up. Turn on a bonus. As I have been playing it, go ahead. Have a, have a blast. Uh, front closest to defeat plus two. Oh, helping me. Aragon. And then all draw three cards. All other players draw one. So they're going to have a lot of tokens at their disposal. So the non-communists, they drew a token. I draw CNT FAI. Finally get into the twos. Ooh, I get to raise my collectivization. Return a card from trash to your hand. So this will help me. Uh, incentivize me to play some of these events now. Uh, so I can get it back. All right. Starting to open up. Front closest to defeat, minus two. Thank you. And they also help out here. They're going to add two strength, one for the base and one for the teamwork bonus. They don't have any kind of snazzy power that buffs them. And now they are going to strike, make a big move. Uh, so they have this medallion. The medallion lets them uh, progress their priority track for the low, low price for one. 
So then we're going to move that over here. We are going to spend four with the moderates uh, right there. And they are going to take control or they're going to try to take control of the government. I still have it. So they are going to use three more tokens to get my collectivization down. It is now down to six, but they only have two tokens left. Yes, <laughs> survive their assault. <laughs> and they did not aid in the defense of uh, Madrid. So I get those three tokens for liberating Madrid. It can now not be affected by the fascist deck, but that just means that they're going to attack the other zones that much harder. The other reason I was comfortable not going for the northern front is because I want to let it burn. <laughs> they did not get to plus two or better. They're only at plus one. So they go down three on the foreign aid track. That's what you get for lowering my liberty, suckers. So nobody gets tokens. I don't get my bonus tokens, but I think that was overall worth it. And for being the leader in that round, I'm going to get my token in the glory bag. And so victory is mine in Madrid. Uh, <clears throat> I meant uh, ours, the Republic for the Republic. Next card, the Regulares. Uh, that is four on the south and uh, three at Aragon. Got that set up right there. And the Soviet tracker is down two. And so I do not trust my erstwhile comrades as far as I can throw them. I know they're going to come after me and my leadership. Uh, my leadership position is tenuous. So we are going to go all in on securing my leadership or at least my ownership of the land. We have two action points and we're going to do three on the Liberty track. Like I said, three on the Liberty track, two action points, and then another for those three hero tokens that I got for securing the victory. Go ahead. Come at me. All right, let's see what the deck is going to do to me. Two point card, those are usually not great indicators. Four and eight plus one, any front plus three, both good. Liberty, minus two, bad. Which is why I sunk so many resources into it. Any front is going to be the southern front. So that is that. And then they are going to do their attack, which is a one. So they don't manage to get to uh, adding the hero token. They're going to have to leave that to the communists. And this is the push and pull of going first. Going first is amazing. Uh, you get all those bonuses. However, you are a target for everything. <laughs> you have to watch it. Uh, the moderates have their one token that is going to reduce a track or manipulate a track. The one they target is me and Liberty trying to get me to five. So that would relinquish control. Don't do it. They don't got enough. All right. You better not misbehave. I know there's a couple cards that can misbehave. Please leave me alone. Southern front, plus one. Government, minus one. Draw a card. I'll take it. Although that gives you a lot of tokens to play with. Don't like that. Uh, let's see. Government, minus one. They take control. They got really lucky with the southern front. That helps them. So they're going to get a hero token from turning it over to Republican control. And they are going to put on two more tokens for uh, the bonus that they get at the uh, end of their round. And also the teamwork bonus. And also, they have their strategy card. Yeah, this, I thought the Southern uh, had a chance to fall, but that card really rescued them. Uh, don't like how that worked out. And check this out. They only have five hero tokens. Ho, 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 one short, one short. They spend the three. They move my liberty down to six. They could have moved it down to five, claiming the government control for themselves, but I retain it. And all those juicy year-end bonuses are mine. Mine! The Southern Front was in the balance, but instead, uh, the Soviet player is going to get two from the success and one from the uh, actual printed success. So three tokens total, bringing them back up to five. The moderate player is going to get two, and I did not participate in that battle, but I get two anyway because of my buff. So I'm getting pretty lucky, doing pretty well. Uh, I get to put in two tokens uh, for the glory because I ended the year, the second year that I did so. Uh, I would not be surprised if I pulled out two different ones that were not mine. At least one, right? Yep, one. And so let's go ahead and put that down. Uh, we have one Soviet and two points for me. And then the moderate player who is shut out is going to get the two hero points. They both are sitting at five. And so I'm going to discard from my tableau. I love the affinity groups, how much options it gives me in terms of that track management and giving me some attack. That is so good. And let's go ahead and continue to add some 
liberty and attack right there i also get the option for turning on a bonus if i really want to that's all going to get discarded i can keep two of these cards i had drawn four you know i'm keeping the three and what else do i want let's keep uh, i just love being able to attack and uh, help the, the foe that way because i'm being so selfish at least i can uh, contribute some attacks along the way Last round of the game is going to go clockwise once again, but I have control on to year three. All right, that is the state of play going into year three. These devastating cards are going to start to come at me. Oh, God, <laughs> the thing that I did not want to happen at all. Oh, Aragon. Oh, no. So what happens is uh, the seven is going to come out and then we take those out and we get defeated on a front. Defeated does a couple of things. First of all, morale gets turned off. Second of all, the three support tracks, collectivization for the anarchist, Soviet support and foreign aid all go down. And now the fascist has some uh, better ability to focus. First of all, any fascist card attacking the defeated front, which is Aragon, Instead, attack the remaining front closest to defeat, which right now is the northern front. Any player cards uh, strengthening the defeated front must now be applied to remaining front closest to defeat. So uh, we will uh, consolidate the board. There are two fronts left. The southern looks pretty good. The northern, eh, let's see what happens. Madrid is attacked. I get to choose where the assault is going to go, and that's probably going to go towards southern. They go down to two. And I keep reading the card. More happens. The Soviets go down another two. You wanted that medal from government? Too bad, Soviets. And at the end of the round, when the task is evaluated, this automatically fails. So I can look forward to a minus one collectivization at the end of this turn. So I kept a three to one from last round. Uh, drew five more cards. Got three more twos. Uh, there is a phase called the final bid. So uh, in the last round of the game, uh, usually round 12, but it's possible to end the game earlier if I get all of the uh, areas that are uh, victorious. Anyway, so for whatever the last round of the game is, I can uh, bid three of my cards that I don't play. Remember, I'm going to play four of them. I'm going to have some left over. Uh, and whoever has the high bid will be able to uh, put a token into the scoring pile, which is right here. The bot has a bid of four, and then I'm going to flip over the top card and add whatever none that is. Neither of them have played their three card, so they could hit a seven as well. We'll see that that's uh, pretty interesting if that happens. But before I get going at all, I'm going to spend my two hero tokens and redo the morale bonus. That is too important to just leave there. And I'm going to be super selfish this turn. Uh, let's go ahead and play a uh, uh, Duruti column. I'm uh, going to get two action points, and I'm going to fire off the bonus action, which is Liberty. Super selfish this turn. Bonus action, which is Liberty. Come at me, bots. All right, let's see what the Communist player does. Are they going to come at me? Yes, they're going to come at me. <laughs> take one hero point from any player. I don't have any. They're going to take it from the moderates. Uh, any front plus one. Soviet support plus one. Liberty or collectivization minus three. Yep, that's coming at me, all right. Soviet support plus one. Liberty minus three. They go, always go for the lowest one. I still have the government control, but that's not going to last for too long. Probably shouldn't just leave myself as a target. It's really bad to go first and <laughs> sink your resources into that because the uh, bots are just going to go after you. I might have been better to just uh, flood the field with some more attacks, but you know what? Live and learn. All right, so any front plus one is going to be this other front. They get the bonus from their medallion. Uh, and then they are going to uh, uh, play, uh, and that is three total. That's actually close to being a victory a frontier as well. And I should have seen this coming. They have three hero, uh, four hero points to spend three of them, knock me off of liberty, and claim the initiative token. Next up is the moderates. Uh, foreign aid plus one, Soviet support minus one, government plus two. Hey, hey. They yank government back uh, support, and they gain a hero point, putting them at five. Foreign aid, plus one. Soviet support, minus one. Government, they are now in charge. We're back to the tug-of-war shenanigans. Actually, that is plus two. And while I'm here, let's go ahead and just spend their hero points right now, because I know I'm going to. Uh, they have the one hero point, which is going to get them to uh, the foreign aid track, which is eight. 
And then that lets them, with their four that is left, cross over and try to claim that last metal. So actually, I misplayed that just the hair. Uh, they, if they cannot go after the uh, tested front because that is wiped out, uh, what the Soviets should have done was they should have gone after the northern because the next progress in their uh, little flow chart is to go after the front closest to defeat. So let's go ahead and just switch that. It doesn't affect too, too much. And let's go ahead and have the... Uh, the moderate defend the northern that makes a little bit more thematic sense anyway but just want to flag for people uh, if the uh, area uh, cannot be attended to in terms of that test because of a defeat or a victory then they just follow that flow chart they go towards the lowest area doesn't get them anything but they do add some defense and so finally, there aren't enough hero tokens to go around because we're not getting all those tokens from passing tests. And that will be the same thing true here. Boo! <laughs> Military dictatorship. The uh, It would attack Madrid, but it is victory. So the moderates, who are the leader, chooses whenever they add attacks to a front, uh, they don't add it to northern. So they have to add it to southern, which is fine by them. And that actually takes uh, southern down from five plus pew, 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 <laughs> to actually temporarily under fascist control. Wow. And they also go after the one that is close to victory, which is the Northern Frontier for three. So that gets them uh, a little bit of control there as well. Wow. That is quite the turnaround for the bot. I forgot I had failed that test last round. Uh, so that goes down from 10 to nine. And we're going to get more injury to me, uh, which brings my liberty down even further. And also, just to rub salt in that wound, it is going to turn off the teamwork bonus. And without hero tokens, it's going to be a lot harder to wake those things up. The good news is, uh, because it is attacking Madrid, it is an automatic success. Uh, everyone's going to get the two tokens. I'm going to get my four. And then the initiative player, that's what this symbol is, will get to play an extra card. How fantastic is that? All right, the moderate moves to consolidate power. Take any two hero points from any player. There's only one hero point out there, and that is the communist. Uh, Soviet support minus three, collectivization minus three. Leave us alone! Still in range to get what I need to get. Uh, let's see, Soviet player, whoop! Sorry about that. Sorry, not sorry, communists. So this is really weak sauce on the part of the moderates. They have the weakest resources when it comes to army. They are going to shore up the northern, but they're not going to get any kind of bonus. Uh, they are just going to help out with the northern to bring them to neutral. Wow, how feeble. However, they are getting plenty of use out of that organization. Uh, they're going to get their one hero point spent, the one that they stole. And they are going to shore up their control of government. All right, so this is a super tough choice. So uh, I want to have 322 for the final bid, but I don't have that. Uh, well, I have it now. Uh, I want to play this one real bad <laughs> because that would help me a lot, especially in the absence of tokens. Uh, but we're going to do it because it's really important that I end this uh, particular time with token or the, the initiative token. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to uh, spend two of the action points over there and then one, two, three, four on Liberty. The reason I needed to spend two action points is because I need to get collectivization to eight in order to get liberty to eight. That's me. Two shall not pass. And no support for the frontiers. Man, I'm turned into a raging selfish player on this last play. All right, bot. I don't like where this is going, but we'll see. So if your support is six or better. Oh, it's not six or better. Any front plus four, uh, if not plus three. For an aid minus two, draw two cards. So let's go ahead and just do the two cards while I'm here. One, two hero points. Four and eight is minus two, taking them out of the eight. This would mean that they could stay here, but they cannot progress as long as four and eight is below eight. And they protect the, the front that they care about, which is southern. So that is one, two, three. Uh, so that is, that is that. And then they have the extra bonus from strategy. So uh, three total strength, four added to southern. So the communists are not in control of government. So the theoretically, they would go after me because I'm the leader, but they don't have control of government. So they're going to focus on that. They have three. They are not able to move the um, 
the government tracker along the way because they need all four of them. <laughs> the moderates really snuck in there with their sneaky organizational skills. And so it is not possible for them to move a track. So they're going to spend two tokens to get the teamwork bonus back. Thank you for that. The test succeeded. We finally have unleashed a flood of tokens. I get my four. The other players get two. I'm not exactly sure if it is meant for every player or just the uh, player that is relevant to that, but I'm just going to say every player uh, and go on from there. Okay, so I get to play a card, which is going to be Iron Column, which is going to give me plus uh, one action point. But the important part is I'm going to get two card draw just in case I need it. So I, I draw my last card of the deck, and then I'm going to reshuffle and hope that I get a two. I have a decent chance at that. No, I do not get a two. The reason I took the card draw is because with that card play, uh, I would have only had two cards left in my hand for the bid. That way I could live that life. I'd rather just have the extra point. Y'all know how I roll. All right, that northern front is looking pretty exposed. Let's see what happens. So Madrid gets five. I can choose uh, because that is the victory front to see where it goes. And then the Southern is going to get hit by four. So I know that. So let's go ahead and hit the Northern with five. And so that's the Northern being hit by five. Uh, that takes out the Republican control of the Southern. They're now at three. Let's turn that teamwork bonus off again. But that's not nearly as devastating because I got some hero tokens for that. And this is the first time this has happened this game. I believe uh, Soviet support is down to zero. And that turns off both bonuses. And so once again, the Madrid front is the victor. So this is automatic success. This means the player with the most hero, hero points at resolution will gain a hero point. I think that might be me. Let's see if I can arrange that. So but first of all, before even thinking, I am going to use my two uh, hero points. You can wake both up uh, in terms of... Uh, you know, using the two hero points, you just have, you always have to spend two hero points no matter what you do, but with those two hero points, you can wake both up. All right, so this time, I know it's the turn 11 of 12, I'm finally doing it, I'm going to play a card for an event, the Radical Education, remove a blank marker from a track, hello, Liberty plus two, hello, I get a Medallion. The medallion lets me put another one of my markers. This is a one shot into the glory bag and then it's discarded. Fantastic. Keep going. Move the government one towards the center right there uh, and draw a card. Hopefully this is the two that I've been looking for. Yes, sir. Now I have my three two two that I need in order to bid the maximum on that last final bid for glory. The downside of that is that I left the Northern Plains completely empty. <laughs> uh, they might go down unless the communists come by and do something about it, or at least both of them. All right. Dolores uh, Ibaruri, something. Any front plus one. That's great. Uh, Soviet support plus two. Liberty minus one. Uh, all sorts of stuff. Let me go ahead and resolve those uh, in order. First of all, let's just gain a hero point while I'm here. They are at four. All right, Soviet support plus two, getting away from that dirty little area over there. Uh, liberty minus one, good thing I uh, jacked up my liberty there. Government minus two, they are in striking range of getting government control. Uh, and I already gained a hero a point for them. So they are going to go after the front that is closest to defeat. So they get any front plus one, and then they get their strategy bonus. And then they are going to remove another one from just their uh, regular bonus and put their marker right there. A little bit under control. They have four hero tokens. They are going to spend it uh, to take control of the government, which is powerless because I've collectivized the entire land. Go ahead and govern the capital city and nothing else. All right. The moderates respond. Liberty or collectivization minus four? What? Oh, 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 oh. Four and eight plus two, return a card from your hand. We all know what that's all about, bringing them the three tokens. I have seen that card before, that dumb minus four. I've had games where I um, I got that like the first turn and just ended up over here. Those are poopy games. Uh, I actually uh, had a really great start to this game, so it's not so bad. But because of that big shot, the moderates... Uh, actually, uh, they punted the control of government over to the communist, 
Uh, so that right now is a state of play, but let's see if the rest of their card play can get them over the hump. So they go one, two with their foreign aid. They go one, two with their aid on the field, thanks to the free attack and the teamwork bonus. And this medallion strikes again one more time. Organization. Uh, to repeat, organization will spend one hero point to move the priority track one step. The priority track for them is government. They take the leadership. And as the last thing of the turn, they're going to put their token in the bag. So now let's spread the token love, baby. So then we got four for me, the anarchist, uh, two for the uh, moderates, and two for the communist. The moderates have four, communists have two. You see how many I have. You know I'm going to use those. And the test is Madrid Front, which is an automatic success, a two or better. Whoever has the most hero tokens gets one more. All right, so I don't think the bot has enough to take out Southern. I don't think that there's like a nine attack on the uh, fascist deck for this last card. Uh, but <laughs> it's going to be, I do have to care because three of the fronts have to be at a positive one. So this is a case where I'm going to want to uh, you know, put, nudge myself up to collectivization uh, and get that uh, alternative token and make sure that both fronts have positive value. All right, Catalina Offensive. Aragon gets six. So then instead of Aragon getting six, that is all going to get shuffled over to the uh, southern flank. And so it would have been super nasty if this was southern. <laughs> It's not Southern. Uh, it is the one close to victory, which is the Northern. That is going to get three. That actually might be challenging to get all these uh, fields of battle into a successful range because I've been neglecting them as the, um, you know, my collective uh, efforts have been neglectful. We'll see if I can rescue it in this last turn. Foreign aid goes down two. Collectivization goes down one, which I'm really mad at right there. But if the Aragon front, oh wait, that's a, that's the Aragon front, uh, we are going to get the penalty, which isn't going to affect anything in the last round. So I have been building up, <laughs> you see what I've been working on, I have the full seven to bid. If this is a three, which it cannot be because that's, that's the card that appeared, so I could just uh, flip that, they lose the final bid. The moderates have not played their three, and they won't play their three. I have won that final bid which allows me to continue to pad my lead at the end uh, right there. So I am three out of four. I'll take it. The moderates have four. Let's see how much they can consolidate. Four. Oh, good. They help us out on the front over there. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Let's take care of it. Foreign aid, plus two, getting them to the key eight. Government, plus two, which is really important to them. They were able to uh, push this all the way out to consolidating their control. Collectivization, minus one. Nuts to you, collectivization. <laughs> that brings your thing down. So you couldn't raise your government if you wanted to. Any front is going to be here. Uh, they are going to uh, emphasize the one that is closest to defeat. They are totally weak sauce, so they only get rid of the one. Wait a minute, there's one on the card. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you for doing something, moderates. So the moderates are going to further consolidate control. They're going to spend the one token. They got five total. Uh, so one token on here that lets them keep on progressing. And then four to continue to gain government control. All right. So I only got my ones left, which is unfortunate, but at least it was worth it for the final bid. There's only one choice. The one that lets me get off and attack. So I got one, two, three, four, five attack for a place. So that is going to be here. One, two, three, four, five. With the teamwork, I get the one bonus. And I get a hero point for that. Yes! And as much as I would like to boost my collectivization, get the leadership back, I think I have enough tokens in there to... And also a lead in the glory track where I have a pretty uh, confident in my victory. So let's go ahead and finally, after all this time, do some uh, selfless stuff. So my one action point I can use here. So that's one, and then I can use a hero point for my one medallion to get rid of that one as well. And that is another piece of attack. I could have rolled the dice and let the communists take care of it, but the stakes are too high, darn it. It would take the communists an absolute miracle 
uh, <laughs> to uh, do what they need to do. Uh, that is not uh, a miracle. It is all track manipulation. Liberty minus two doesn't do anything. Soviet support plus one doesn't do anything. Uh, if Soviet support is eight or better, yeah, right. Uh, otherwise, they yank control back of the government, or at least they try. That's a good try. So they get the teamwork bonus and medallion bonus at the top of their base. That brings that from one to two. The Republic is secured. I make it to the end game. And so the last little bit is quite simple. Uh, the moderates ended with control of the government, so they put two of their tokens in the bag. I have a nice little lead in glory. Went out to an early one. Uh, now I pull five tokens from the bag. There's a whole bunch of them in here. There's way more than five. So I think I have a good chance to maintain the lead, but let's see. All right, we got the moderates. We got me. Excellent. Whoa. <laughs> Who needs to end the game uh, with government control? Holy Toledo. <laughs> I literally pulled all the tokens that I could have pulled. Uh, so I think getting one of them would have assured me with the victory. Uh, even if one of them had kind of comboed uh, and ran the table or anything, that's what they it would have taken in order for them to win. I had a pretty decent shot at winning. Uh, the blowout just puts icing on the cake. And so I hope you had as much fun watching this Land of Freedom playthrough if you made it all the way to the end as I had playing it. It's an interesting game. I haven't played anything like it. I'm not usually a war gamer. This isn't quite a war game, but it definitely kind of evokes some of that tug of war track manipulation. Uh, but in a way where there isn't a whole bunch of troops and everything, it's just a distilled experience. The co competitiveness and the cooperativeness really worked out. Making genuine choices between, uh, you know, I was I hit a point in the game where I just got real selfish and, you know, I ended up maybe paying for it. And then I had to kind of uh, reel it back towards the end. Those were really, really fun choices. Uh, the bot I find to be a, a, not a little bit swingy, a lot swingy. So you saw that I had, I got that collectivization uh, or Liberty minus four card. Like I said, I have had games where I get those uh, piled on. Uh, my first game of this, I my first three turns, uh, I got minus eight on my tracks and I spent the entire time catching up. I was much less powerful and it just, uh, it wasn't as fun. I wasn't picked on as much, but just getting back there was a little bit of a slog. So that was a little bit frustrating. So I guess I'll note the swinginess of the bots. But if you hear Alex talk, uh, the bots were something that was added on a little bit later in the design. Uh, this is a multiplayer game, a three-player game, uh, heads up, uh, doing the cooperation versus competitive thing. If you can play this game with three players, I think that is the ideal experience. This one's going to stay in my collection. I really enjoyed Land and Freedom. This is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop, reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.